Feet hip width the part, soften the knees, tuck the pelvis under. Find the pelvic floor, draw in. Find transverse abdominus and draw in. Shoulders relax, length at the back of the neck. 10 times, draw in, slow release. So let's go in and out and in and out. Try not to hold the breath and in and out and in and out and in and out and breathe and in out in out in out in and out last one and in and out now draw in halfway so not so much it's taking all of your concentration Keep that core center pulled in, take some big arm circles and we'll tie this in with the breath. Breathing in left, breathing out lower. Think about what's happening with the pelvis. So keep the pelvis tucked under so we're not arching the lower back, we're not moving as such. So kind of keep the, the center nice and strong. So we're getting a little bit of stretch around the shoulders, around the chest. Length at the back of the neck. Crown ahead, shining up to the ceiling. Breathing in left, breathing out low. Adding in if you want, up onto the toes. Start to grow tall, breathing out to lower. Three more. Just testing the balance a little bit, waking up the ankles and the feet. Bringing the heels down, take the arms up and just gently hold on to the wrist. It doesn't matter which side you've gone first. And then gently pull that wrist over into a side bend. Take a deep breath and then lift, come back up to center. And then go to the other side, just gently draw on the wrist. Take yourself over, try and keep your head in between your arms. Take a deep breath here. And then release, center again, other side. Bending the knees a little bit if you need a little bit of support there on the lower back. Gently drawing on the wrist. Big side body stretch. Take the deep breath as you go over. Drawing in the core to recenter. Just two more, again, just holding the wrist. Gentle stretch. Centering, drawing in course, the last one. Gently pulling on the wrist. And then release. So crossing the legs, and we'll go for a slow roll down, um, but with legs crossed, so it's a bit IT bandy. So crossing the legs, interlink the fingers, so your palms are facing each other. Draw that up over the head, so it's a full body stretch. Looking forwards and then bend the knees, breathing out, circle the arms down and around, deeply bending the knees, coming down so you're looking towards your knees, your chin goes to your chest and then gently uncurl. Do two more, reaching up, interlink those fingers, grow tall, crown of head shines to the ceiling, then take your release. Breathing out, knees are deeply bent. Find that lower back stretch, but also kind of working at the edges of where the hamstrings are, the glutes come in. Running around the outside, the outside of the, the leg. Now you can take legs a bit straighter on that last one for an extra breath if you want to. Then switch the feet over, take the crossover, interlink. Same again, three on the other side. Breathing in, lift, grow tall. Breathing out, release, bend the knees, chin to chest. And then uncurl. Breathing in to get tall. Breathing out, curling down. Maybe each time you're doing it, you're getting a little bit further in, further down into your stretch. On that last one, you could maybe think about straightening the back leg a little bit more on your stretch. 
Okay, squats, and if you've got your weights, you can put your weights in. Feet hip width apart, check your feet are parallel, they're not kind of turning out kind of duck feet. Bending knees, hips back into space, front raise, and you can alternate with lateral raise. Try and keep the length of the back of the neck looking forwards. Squeezing glutes as you lift. Think about the knees. Try not to let the knees pronate in. If you like, you could take one front, one side. Just to mix it up a little bit. Notice what happens to the shoulders as you do that. So try and keep the shoulders down and back so we're not tilting in the shoulders. Draw in, use the core. Three more. Then the deadlift, the, the single leg deadlift with a single arm shoulder press. So opposite hand is gonna go down to the knee you've got forwards, another leg goes back. You might just go halfway then take a high knee and then it's a shoulder press on that same arm. So that hand goes down. You could take it all the way down towards the floor, coming up to centre, shoulder press. Eight on one side and then eight on the other. So it's a real good test on balance. So use the big toe as an anchor. Engage, use your pelvic floor. See so if you can test yourself with the eye gaze going down to the mat, then drawing a line as you come up to standing, draw a line with the eye gaze. So you're keeping that length at the back of the neck, the crown of the head stays long as you come into the upright. You can soften the knee on that standing leg, doesn't need to be completely straight, then swap, switch sides. So again, just start with a couple of halfway down ones, just kind of testing the balance. And obviously, if the balance is too much, you can hold the other hand onto the, the wall or whatever you've got. Try and keep your shoulders relaxed, work with the eye gaze. Try not to hold the breath. You can. Start thinking about going further down towards the floor with that hand and that leg going further back and up. Particularly on your high knee, just check your hips aren't tilting so we're not letting that hip that's going up into the high knee hitch. So keep it down level with the other hip. And then my last one, just to get in my eight. Then, shoulders down and back, go to a scapula set. So a little bit of a combination here, and it's tricky because you've got to get into the right position, so we don't want the elbows forwards or back, so check they're tucked into the side. Your shoulders are down, scapula set for one, then bicep curl. For maybe eight and you can work quite quickly and then go to a scapula set again so you've almost got to reset into that scapula set then bicep curl strengthening reset open get the squeeze on the shoulders bicep curl now find the pelvic floor find the core try and stay nice and still in the center this is a bit like the pulsing on a 100 when you bicep curl quite quickly, stay strong in the center, pelvis tucked under, soften the knees, equal weight on the feet. And maybe you're getting a little bit further into your scapula set each time you're working with this. Stay strong in the wrists.
Breathe out into the scapula set one more time. Eight bicep curls. One of those scapula sets. Okay, wide squat with the circle. Last one with the weight. Oh, uh, actually, nearly last one. I've just got one more after this. Bend the knees, shoulders relaxed. If you need to do a little side to side sumo, <laughs> go for that. <laughs> Okay, drawing a really big circle, a big sun, because it's been so hot recently. <laughs> With the weights, for one way, for the other. Breathing in, lift. Keep the pelvis tucked under as much as you can. Draw in the core. So come and find that transverse abdominus and pull in. Try and keep the head still. Another thing you can work on when you are walking and running is keeping the head still whilst the other parts of the body are moving. Unless of course you're pulling around lifting around and bobbing your head up and down. <laughs> okay, um, I think the next one's easier to do in kneeling, which is why I brought the camera down. So if you can find kneeling, if kneeling doesn't suit you, um, do it in standing. So it's a tricep um, exercise and you can do them both together. So lifting up, point your elbows to the ceiling. Now why I think it's easier in kneeling is you can tuck the pelvis under. So you can send the hips forward so it's a little bit easier in kneeling compared to standing. Often in standing, um, what happens is we arch the lower back in to do this move. So you can do it in standing, but just be really conscious of what's happening with the lower back. So you've got the elbows pointing to the ceiling, and it's almost like you're gonna chuck something, like an overhead chuck. Then you take, in fact, I'm just gonna go down so you can see what I'm doing. You extend and then lower. But I don't recommend being in that position. This one's much better. So this is the backs of the arms. After about eight of these, you'll start noticing that. <laughs> Control as you lower. So you can work into accelerating and pushing away, but as you lower, try and keep it at the same pace, but controlled, so we're not kind of like just letting it drop. Engage the core, keep that pelvis tucked under. Eye gaze forwards, length at the back of the neck. Try not to dip the chin too much there. Two more. Breathing out, lift. Breathing in, lower, last one. Lift and then release, and then we'll put the weights to the side. A little bit more balance, so just transfer the weight onto one foot. We'll do um, the um, standing, closing your eyes balance. Transfer the weight and then go to the other side, because I bet you, you've chosen your favorite side first. <laughs> then close your eyes. See if you can count to eight, so a little bit more than normal. Find your core center, shoulders relaxed. Perhaps using your big toe as a bit of an anchor, your glutes. Try and just iron out the breath. Then opening your eyes, take eight heel lifts. Try and work directly from the floor all the way up towards the glutes. Maybe you feel that in the calf muscles, you've got that going over the ball of the foot. So using the big toe, the ball of the foot. Squeeze the glutes, draw in your pelvic floor. Then we'll switch sides, start with the closed eyes balance. So just find a point of relaxation. Using your big toe, pelvic floor, squeezing the glutes. Relax the muscles in your face. Close your eyes, count to eight. Then when you're ready, open the eyes. Take your eight heel lift. Again, working directly from the floor straight up into the pelvis if you can. So it's these connections we're working on. Notice if you've dipped, I mean I'm doing it a little bit, dipped your shoulder down to that side, so just if you can square your shoulders out. 
you can use your fingertips for that as well. So reach your fingertips down towards the floor. So then before we go down to the mat, let's take a quad stretch. So um, just, I'm not gonna use the wall just so I can focus more on my stretch than my balance. But if you wanna focus on your balance, don't hold on to anything. Holding on to the front of your ankle. So try not to hold the foot because it tends to pull quite a lot on the shin area. So try and hold really the front of the um, ankle area. Try and think about what's happening with the knees because often we can start in that position so this is just if you can adjust and bring the knees to neutral. Then you'll probably find the stretch on the quad, which is at the front of the leg. Then what's happening with the hips? So if your hips are like headlights, see if you can just tilt so your headlights are facing forwards, not down. Then you'll probably find the stretch in there. Then what's happening with your shoulders? Are you tilting with your shoulders? Is, your, is one side of your body tilting to find the stretch, so just see if you can adjust, straighten all these points out. Then are you looking down? I know I always look down on this, so if you can look up, think about the opening a little bit more on the chest, tuck the pelvis under, and then finally just take a deep breath. And then we'll switch sides. Again, if you want to use just the wall and then you can focus on your alignment and things like that, or simply work with balance. So start with thinking about the balance elements, so the big toe, the foot, then the knees in line. Then we're going up the body to the hips, the headlights. Are they facing down or can we get them to face forwards? Then what's happening with the shoulders? Are they tilting? So if we can square these shoulders open a little bit here with the chest. Then let's go to the eye gaze, start looking ahead. And then let's just take a deep breath. Nice, so a bit of a release in there. Okay, let's go down, we'll find a downward dog or puppy dog, so we'll meet down there. I'll just adjust my camera. So your version of downward dogs, I'm gonna put in a few little options if you want them. Take my socks off. <laughs> Spread the fingers, spiral biceps towards each other. You can deeply bend the knees to create that stretch on the backs of the shoulders. If you're struggling, with that, don't pressure yourself by putting the heels down. Just let the heels be lifted. You can always go into plank, hinge the hips back up, see if that helps you get a little bit kind of straighter there in the spine. So a little bit of a variation today is to bring in um, development towards a wild thing stretch. Some of you will know this one. So you can hold in dog and just walk through, that's one option, or puppy dog, hold your stretch. Otherwise, um, go, we'll start with the right knee towards your nose, so drift it forwards to plank, and then extend, and then bending in the knee, stack the hips on top of each other, but try and keep the shoulders square. Then knee goes to right elbow, and then again, stack the hips, bending in the knee, then over to the left. So there's a little bit of hip mobility work. Stacking hips. Then on that last one, come to centre, lift, and then you could just take it over so the foot drops to the floor. Open out, just find some sort of chest stretch, and it's the wild thing. So you, there's no rules, you just open out. <laughs> then bring it all back round, we go to the other side. So find a dog just for a moment. Then same thing, left leg, knee to nose, extend, bending in the knee. Think about what's happening with the shoulders, so square the shoulders, then over towards right elbow, opening, and to the left. Stacking the hips, then I need a bit more space, then you can just take it over, let that foot drop, push the hips up towards the ceiling, 
Allow some space there in the chest. Take a deep breath. And then twist it all back around into your dogs. Last moment, lift the hips up to the ceiling. Then lower it down. Knees underneath your hips, hands under the shoulders. Oh, nice. Gonna just go with a really simple one now, um, but kind of incorporating um, we, uh, a couple of the different weeks that we've done this, this month. So extend uh, one leg back, take your low handshake on the other side. So really simple, opposite arm, opposite leg, left squeeze in the glutes, neutral spine, stay really strong in the center, then take your look side to side. So we did this earlier in the month, then explore to the corners and then center. And then that's it, so simply switch sides. So into your extensions, staying strong in the center, squeezing the glutes, into your neck release, looking side to side, then into your corners, and then center. So nice, strong, stable in the stability work with the glutes. A little bit of a stretch as you go out to the sides. Now if you want a challenge, bring in your balance. So just lift up that back foot. So you're resting on the knee as you go into your, your neck, side to side. <laughs> and then you might want to put the foot down for the corners. Sometimes it gets a little bit tricky. So again, just testing yourself with a bit of balance. If you want a bit more of a challenge last time through, close your eyes for the corners. So you've got your neck release. Then closing your eyes, see if you can find your corners. <laughs> it's a really tricky one, isn't it? Last time, extensions, network, Close eyes, explore the corners. <laughs> okay, we release a blow lunge. Step forwards, check your somewhere hip width here. Bring hands to heart center, just nice and simple. Let's kind of connect left to right side of brain. Take a deep breath here. Allow your hips to sink, but enough core engagement that we're not losing the position on the pelvis. Nice stretch just at the front of the thigh. Again, just another deep breath, really expand, widen the rib cage with your breath. Go for one more deep breath. This time, think about the length at the back of the neck, crown of head rising towards ceiling. And then we'll switch legs. Again, somewhere on the hip width. Notice what's happening with the back foot as well. We often find the back foot will turn in. So just see if you can keep that alignment there with the side of the mat. Hips are facing forwards. Headlights on the hips are facing forwards. Hands at heart center. Three deep breaths. Just allowing the hips to sink down, find that stretch on the front of the leg. Really widening the rib cage with your inhales, softening the body with your exhale. One more, find that length of the back of the neck. Okay, from there then, let's go down onto our front. Find a sphinx to start with, so elbows underneath your shoulders. And then just lift up your kneecaps and reach your toes towards the end of the mat. So just always thinking about taking a little bit of a squeeze on the legs, finding a little bit of length. Then think about lifting up the chest, take the shoulders down and back, and looking forward so you've got length at the back of the neck. So it's almost like we're getting a little really soft, gentle stretch across the spine here. We're sending the feet back, but we're lifting the crown of the head forwards. 
Then you can release the kneecaps down and take four cobras. So gently pressing up, straighten the arms. Send the headlights on your hips down to the mat here as you lift your chest. Bring the shoulders down, but lift the rib cage. You should find an abdominal stretch in here. So by sending those hips down, you should find a stretch in the abdominal area. Last one, into your left. And lower. Okay, glute activation. So rest your head on your hands. Squeeze in one glute, then extend the leg. It doesn't have to be super high. And then release. You might want to close your eyes. Forehead just resting on your hands. If you can, point your toes so the sole of your foot shines to the ceiling. Like you've got bird food on the sole of your foot and you're just lifting it to feed. Um, mm, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that one. <laughs> uh, feed an ostrich. <laughs> Think about what's happening in these headlights. So send them down, keep them still. They want to tilt side to side. Use your core, stabilize the lower back. Squeeze the glutes, get the hamstrings to engage, and then lower back stabilizes. All whilst you're feeding an ostrich. <laughs> Two more. Okay, arms down by your sides. We're going to swan dive, but there's a little bit of preparation we're going to do. So breathing out, lift head and shoulders, shine your palms up towards the ceiling. Work on the length at the back of the neck, so keep the chin tucked down, and then release it down. Legs can just be switched off on this, so totally relax the legs just for a moment. Breathing out, lift, breathing in lower. Then just bring one arm into your cactus and the other arm's down by your side. And then do the same thing into your left and lower. So if you can get to the same height on both sides, so the shoulders are square, you're reaching the fingertips down on one side. Breathing out, lift. Breathing in lower. Then just switch that over so the arms are doing the opposite. One in cactus, one reaching back. And again, just working on shoulders being um, square. They're not doing different things. Eye gaze down. Then bring them both into cactus. And then you can work into your left and your lower, adding in if you choose, into your left, extra breath, extend, breathing out, and then come back to cactus and lower. Three more, whichever version that you're working with, if you liked the one arm in one position, one on the other, go again with that, two more. We're working with the full extensions, Then the release stretch is cat stretch, so back on all fours, chin into chest, tuck the pelvis under, rounding through the top of the shoulders, really spread the fingers, push the palms down, and then your choice really, if you want to move here, let your body move, you could spiral the hips, or you could spiral with the shoulders, again that's just about exploring the stretches at the sides, the corners of this move. You could figure and eat that, or just go back around the other way. So it's almost about finding areas of tightness and then just working into that to find a little bit of ease and release. Take a moment to have a wrist stretch. So one hand, press down, fingertips towards the knees. 
Try and get equal weight here through both wrists, but only one's on the stretch. And think about your shoulders again, being square, doing the same, same thing each side. And switch sides. Okay, gonna go to the front plank. Um, I've got um, a nice tricky version to put in this, which is fun. <laughs> fun. So you can go straight in, or if you need a rest, hips down and lift, elbows under shoulders. Now deeply work with this core engagement now, so find pelvic floor, find transverse abdominis and tuck the pelvis under with that. You've got the option to straighten legs. You can go straight in there, take the stretch on the backs of the feet. So, the first add-in I'm going to give you is a salute on one side. So there is a little bit of a tilting if you're on full plank. So all you're going to do is elbow points to the side wall and then re-centers. Try and keep the crown of head in line with the spine. You've got to kind of work with the tilt on the body, create the balance and you can be in knees down for that as well. That's obviously your other option. Two more, we're going for about eight of these. Then just take a little rest. We're just going to layer it all up. Ten seconds to rest, and then we'll go again. This time we're going to work with leg lift. So hips lifted, engage the core. Option one, knees down, and it's just going to be straight in the leg and then lower. So it's, so it's just like a, uh, that's all we're doing really. Then option two, legs straight. Point the toe and just drift up that leg so you're pointing to a point behind you. Switch sides. Try and do eight of them. Think about what's happening with the hips there. So you're not tilting with the hips, you're squeezing through the glutes. Ears demanding. Breathe out left, breathing in recenter. Two more. Stay strong in the core. Take a rest, bring it all down. So final one. Salute one side and then leg lift on the other. So we're gonna go cross body, balance work. And you can do exactly this. Knees down, so you're in a salute and a leg lift. We're gonna do eight of these. Okay, so find your version of plank, either knees down or legs straight. So you've got salute one side, leg lift with the other. This is quite hard, don't expect this one to be easy. So if you can do eight of these. Eye gaze just to the front of the mat. Keep engaging with the core. It's a big balance move. That's one. <laughs> it was worth the wait. <laughs> so back onto the heels and um, child's pose. So if you want to just focus on the breath, drop the elbows off the sides of the mat, bring your forehead down. If you feel like your shoulders are tight, you want a shoulder stretch, do a little thread through. So one hand threads under and the other arm reaches forwards. Four breaths on each side, or just take an eight breath, big yogi breaths, belly breaths, lifting up the spine towards the third eye in your child's pose. Thinking about our original intention. So this idea of release, finding peace, and coming to a sense of ease.
Okay, uh, pick a side then, and we're going to go to clams. So if you want your loop bands, you can put them in. Bend the knees, heels level with your shoulders, level with your hips. Tilt yourself over so you're nearly um, dropping onto your front. Then engage the core. Ten slow, or if you're working on your kind of uh, pace or strength of glute med, you could go a little bit quicker, do your 30 first. Sometimes the slow is quite nice, it works through the range and you can work with control, precision. Notice what's happening with the feet, so try not to let the feet kind of crumble, I put crumble. I always think of apple crumble when I say that though. So a little bit of tension in the feet. <laughs> And then when I start thinking about custard, it's just like my brain just, yeah, the way it relates to things. Nightmare. <laughs> Check you're engaging with the core. Sometimes we go on the side, we go on this move, we just forget that we're, we need to stay strong in the centre. So I've done my slow turn, I don't know how you're getting on. Straighten the legs. We did this one last week, it's gonna be a, a double leg lift and then roll for a diagonal um, touch, both leg lift. So lift and lift, rib cage lift, arms up and over, take a balance, take a stretch. Then release, breathing out, and then you can place your hand down, take, take a diagonal here, reach towards your ankles and lower. Three more, now you can work as quick as you like into these if you want to test yourself on your balance. You can go quite quickly and see if you can adjust. More as slow as you like. Think about the rib cage, think about the core. Think about getting the squeeze and the length down the legs. You can always try as well without putting that top arm down. So the, that top arm just kind of floats around doesn't actually touch the floor. Quite an interesting way of working with it. Okay, I'm trying to think if I can do this next one without bands. I was gonna do the side bend lift, the frog jumping into the pond. So you might have to get rid of the band on that. So start like a mermaid. Then lift the top knee. Interlink the feet, so you've got the, the, the knee pointing up to the ceiling, that foot's in front. Place the hand down, stay strong in the wrist. Breathing out, extend the legs, it's lift up the hips, big side body stretch, and we do four of these. It's breathing out into that lift. I'm gonna strengthen the shoulder. Again, it kind of works as well quite nicely with the corners. And all down the legs, this one. Last one. So those three moves on the other side then. So start with the clams. Bend the knees, like you're gonna fall forwards. Try not to let the chest and the shoulders, um, like particularly shoulders, we don't really want to be in that position, so try and keep a little bit of space in the chest, go into your clams. Again, watch what the feet are doing a little bit there. Engage with the core, tuck the pelvis under. So you're finding that, you're finding the glute med in there. Try not to be in that position. I'm just looking at the screen there a little bit. Looks a lot of me. I can't see very well. You don't want to be open. You don't want to be in a quad stretch position. So do try and almost be in a curved round, a curve like you're you're kind of um, curved round a nest. That's a nice vision, isn't it? <laughs> birds. I'm very much thinking about birds tonight, aren't I? Nests, birds. All I've got to do is mention eggs a bit later on, and then we're then I've made a theme. <laughs> uh, 
So I've done my 10 now, I'm gonna go into my double leg lift. Four of these, so first of all, just go separate, get everything working into the separate lift, lifts, lift the rib cage, get your squeeze, breathe out, release, lift. So if you can make some sort of touch on the ankles. Take a bit of a diagonal, it's a little bit more interesting to work on those uh, diagonals. So we're not, that would be straight, so like over. <laughs> then maybe you can work with just keeping that top arm lifted, it doesn't actually touch the floor. It kind of circles round. Don't forget to breathe. Then the mermaid and then into side bend. Just wait for everyone to catch up. Top leg, knee goes up to the ceiling, interlink the feet. Breathing out, lift up the hips, big side body stretch. And then lower into that lift. Really find some length through the spine with this. Looking forward, don't let the head drop at the end. So try and keep the head in line with this lifted arm. Two more. Last one. And release, okay, flying on our backs then. Check the time of how we're doing, yeah, we're fine. Find a neutral spine, bend the knees. Length at the back of the neck. We're gonna go straight into the 100 today. So find a little bit of an imprint on the lower back, use your core, knees, feet, hip width, check the feet are parallel. Four toe taps, eight pulses, and then an eight second hold. Okay, relax the shoulders if you can on the toe taps. Take the palms up, because it just keeps the chest open. Here we go then, so four and three. Focus here on the imprint, try and keep the hips still. Two and one. Lift head and shoulders, pulse the arms. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Slide the fingertips towards the knees, the ribs to the hips. Hold, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Take it up if you want the next level. Four, three, two, and one. Ready to pulse, keep the tummy still. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and reach. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Here we go. Four, and three, imprinting, two, and one, ready to pulse, you could take a hover. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and rise, hold, teasers if you want them. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release, and again, four, three, two, and one, to pulse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and hold and breathe. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Release, last time, toe taps. Three and two, one, pulse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and hold. Oh. <laughs> Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one and release, full body stretch. Give everything a bit of a squeeze, point the toes, squeeze the glutes, pull the tummies in. See if you can get your shoulders to touch your ears, scrunch up your fists, scrunch up your face. Take a really big deep breath in. And as you breathe out, just let everything go. A moment to relax.
bending the knees and fingertips just behind the ears. We're going to go for a crisscross. Lift one leg up to your tabletop, opposite elbow towards that knee, and then lower. Think about the rib cage lifting more so than kind of your head and your neck. So think about the whole rib cage, shoulder girdle lifting. Breathing out left, breathing into lower. If you want more, you're just going to tabletop that. You can do that in just standard tabletop without moving. Quite challenging. Or if you want to put in, you could put in your single leg stretch. Keep the control there in the centre. So try not to let the hips tilt all over the place and wiggle. Sorry. Sometimes if you feel like you're tilting too much, go back to just solid tabletop. And work with that. Just breathing out to lift. Breathing in to lower. Okay, keep working. Keep working with this idea of rib cage. So we're not just kind of shoving the elbow across. That would be that would be cheating. <laughs> Three more. Last one. Place the feet down just for a moment of rest. Then one foot up to the ceiling, like you're wearing new shoes. You're going to look at your new shoes. Did this one last week. And then place it back down. Hands on hips. So if you can keep the hips still as you do this so that they're not um, tilting. You're not lifting up your buttocks to get into that position. Shoulders are relaxed. Then all we're going to do is add in scissors. So we're going to lift head and shoulders, lift again rib cage, and look at these shoes a little bit closer and then lower. Bending in the knee as you go up. So it's not we're not going straight leg up, bend. So it's almost knee goes to chest and then extends. Then your choice if you want to add in, straighten the other leg, hover, and you can take it into your scissors. Take a bend in the centre and then open out into scissors. So come almost like a ball and then unravel. Try and stay strong in the centre, try not to let too much tilting occur as you Switch this over. Just two more of these, bend, and then opening out. Oh, um, just finish, finish this core bit with a couple of double legs, double leg, um, double leg, well, I forgot what you call them, a <laughs> double leg stretch. <laughs> Hug knees to chest. Push both legs away. Lower back stays down. If you want to add in the full body option, arms overhead and think about it as a stretch. Think about it just as a way of opening, extending. And then again, come back into your ball. Breathing out. If you want a big sigh as you do your stretch. Imprint lower back down, imprint shoulders down. Last one. <laughs> Bend knees, arms out to the sides. Can we got the space cactus? Breathing out, let both knees drop across to one side. Lower back release. Breathing in centre, over to the other side. Up to you what you feel here. If you feel like you just feel like you want to hold that stretch on the lower back, knees across, take that top, uh, hold on to the top part of the knee and just work with a stretch. And then extend the opposite hand to the opposite corner. Otherwise you might feel like movement's working more for you today, so keep moving across. You could look in the other direction as well. 
So again, it's just what your body is telling you that it needs. If it needs a little bit of a stillness and then a, a release with the breath. Couple more breaths, whichever version that you're with. Coming into center. So we'll shoulder bridge. So start with a pelvic tilt. Just use it to massage the lower back to start with. And I've done a lot tonight on kind of keeping the shoulders um, kind of square and things like that. So we'll do a shoulder bridge and we'll leg lift if you want, but we're gonna add an alternative arm lift. So lifting up the hips, chin to chest, length at the back of the neck. Then just take one arm back. Now, your choice, you can put in a leg lift there if you want, or just stay with a standard shoulder bridge lift. Alternate the arms. If you put your leg lift in, then you might just want to uh, leg lift, hold, alternate for four, and then drop. So your choice, if you leg lift, try and keep those hips as high as you can, squeeze in the glutes. As you're reaching that one arm over the head, really reach the fingertips. You can swap legs if you're doing leg lifts. Notice when you swap the arms though, what happens with the shoulders? So see if you can keep these shoulders square. We're not tilting the upper body or the spine as we do the alternate arms. The head's not moving. Two more with the arms. Squeezing glutes really high on the hip lift. Then bringing that other arm down, lowering yourself down, vertebrae by vertebrae, hug knees into chest. Rock or circle, come up to a seated position. Just take a check on the time. One minute, two. Who's got, how many moves have I got left? Three, but they're quite quick ones. So I won't take forever, I won't take all your time. Roll back, so your choice, lower back to upright. Try not to lift the head or the chin, or curved up like a ball. Rock back, come to the hover. Now last week we did crab, so there's another option, holding on to your feet, crossing the legs, take it back, all the way up to a kneeling, and then opening out at the top. So that was that option. Other option, shoulder bridge, uh, shoulder stands. Work at length towards the ceiling. And then lower it down. Come to your rock, uh, come to your roll like a ball. So three options. I think I'm gonna go for a crab. I quite like the crab. Give it a crab. <laughs> Holding on, rocking back. That's a shoulder, try a shoulder stand. Just think about the alignment here. Think about the toes pointing to the ceiling. Squeeze it, kind of tuck the, tuck the pelvis under. Engaging with the core, get nice and upright. So after we go shoulder stands, we're in that position. So see if you can get nice and upright, chin to chest. Then control, lower it down. Rock it like a ball. Wait for everyone to come down. Upright positions, flex the feet, hamstrings, getting a bit of a stretch. We did it last week, so rowing. So come down, lower back comes down, and coming forwards. Oh, so again, how strange. <laughs> oh. 
Sorry, I don't know why it's doing, it's done it again weirdly. We're nearly finished. Really strange today. I'm better off in car parks, aren't I? <laughs> so, if you're going with core engagement here, keep working with the halfway row and forwards. If you feel like your hamstrings need a stretch, bring it forwards and hold. And you can simply hold in here. Lift up the chest and take some deep breaths. Try not to extend the neck too much, so try and keep that in line. So about four breaths in here. If again you just want to work with the core, you can work with your rowing positions. Your halfway rows down and coming back up. Otherwise just work with your strength. You could be holding onto shins there, you don't have to be holding onto the toes. Really expand the rib cage as you inhale. Try and gently soften through the body as you exhale. Two more breaths, whether you're rowing or holding your stretch. Okay, nice. Crossing legs, legs straight. Namaste.